Hey there guys, Wes from dndtonight.com and today I'm going to show you how I painted Marathi for use in our Daughters of Cain army in Age of Sigmar. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is get a good base coat of corn red down. So we're going to go ahead and work in sections. We're going to use this color on the tail and later on we're going to use it on the wings as well. Uh, I get a little scatterbrained sometimes so I like to kind of work in one section, finish it and move on to the next. So we're just going to spray this all over the top of the tail and over the bottom of it. Basically just get the whole thing nice and coated and it's going to serve as a really good foundation for what we're going to do later. If you want to go ahead and move ahead and, and work on the wings, that's fine too. So after you've gotten all that red done, we're going to move on to our flesh tones and we're going to start with Bugman's Glow because it serves as a really, really good uh, base layer when you're working with lighter color skin. Honestly, I didn't really use this color too often before. I would normally just kind of jump right to Kislev flesh, uh, but it, it is uh, definitely going to give us some undertones to it and it's going to look a lot better if we start with this and kind of build up to a lighter skin tone. And honestly, you could probably leave it here and not even really go into the higher tones of the skin. I think both of these colors together look awesome. After we've got that layer finished, we're going to move on to Kislev Flesh. And what I'm doing here is just taking some of it and adding it right into the pot that I was already spraying the Bugman's Glow out of. It's probably going to be around a two to one Kislev Flesh to Bugman's Glow mix. Uh, and this way it's going to preserve some of that color from before and not be as stark of a contrast. You could just go straight to Kislev Flesh if you've already used up all your Bugman's Glow. But I like to use some of the original color when I'm doing any kind of blending like this. It just makes it look a lot more natural and a better transition. So a little tip for when you're doing this, try to aim the airbrush right at the center of what you're painting. That way we're going to get a little bit of overspray from the Kislev Flesh onto the Bugman's Glow and maybe a little bit on the red as well. But since you're not really focusing it there, it's going to just kind of have like a semi-transparent uh, look to it and it's going to blend those colors together. Meanwhile, it's going to put a much lighter color where you're directly spraying it. So this next part's really easy. We're gonna take Karaberg Crimson and we're gonna mix it about one to one with Lamia Media. And if you're a little bit nervous, uh, you can just add a little extra of the medium to it. And you can always do a second layer if you decide to wanna make it a little bit darker. But what we're gonna do now is completely cover everything we've painted so far with this wash. And I'm a big fan of anything that does a lot of the work for you. So washes are definitely a part of my painting arsenal. And the reason we're thinning this with medium rather than with water or a flow aid 
is we want it to still work like a wash. We want it to tint everything, but we don't want it to be quite as strong as it would be out of the pot. That's gonna kind of ruin a lot of the work that we've done. It's just gonna make it way too red. So a little bit of medium goes a long way and it's gonna help blend all these colors together while still maintaining that contrast that we work so hard to make. We're gonna go ahead and use a flow aid later in the video, so I'll show you the difference between these two. So next up, after that dries, we're gonna grab Caribou Crimson again, and we're gonna do just one wash straight out of the pot, just over the top of the scales. And we're gonna darken that up and just kinda add to the whole gradient that we've been making. Like I mentioned before, I can be a little scatterbrained when I'm painting my models, and I used to just go straight to Kislev Flesh instead of putting down a base layer of Bugman's Glow. So you probably could have done this a little bit earlier when we were originally working with it, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it now. And I'm gonna put Bugman's Glow all over the flesh colored parts of Morathi. I'm gonna put this over the arm, the back, the front, and I'm gonna do it on the wings as well, just over where the spines are. So this next part is gonna be really subtle and it's a lot of it's gonna get buried by the colors we're gonna put down afterwards, but it's again, all about creating that gradient. So every little bit that goes into it is gonna 
come out to make a really awesome effect later down the line. So like I said, I'm just going right over where the spines are and I'm leaving the, the middle part white because we're going to hit that with corn red next. with corn red and we're going to spray the inside of the wings and the same technique as before when we were working on the tail focus the beam of the airbrush where you want it to be the most red and just kind of let the overspray blend the bugman's glow and the red together take some druchi violet and I'm gonna send this through the airbrush and just draw a line down where the spine meets the membrane of the wings. Uh, purple is actually a really good color to shade red with. It ends up looking really really cool and I know that might sound a little weird at first but trust me it's gonna look nice. Thank you. 
So we're using the Bugman's Glow here to do the center part of the wing, but I kind of realized I forgot to do her face earlier when I was doing all the skin, so I'm just gonna go ahead and blast that real quick and get a base coat down. So now we're going to fill the center part of the wing with the Bugman's Glow. We're going to use this as a undercoat for Rackar Flesh, what we're going to get to next. And be careful with this. Uh, we, again, same technique as before, spray at the center, let the overflow from the brush do all the blending for you. Um, but try to work in small layers at a time and kind of eyeball it, see if it looks good. If you think it needs more, just go ahead and put more down. But again, don't stray too far from the center or you end up risk messing up the transition by putting too much paint down. So the wings actually look really cool right now where we're at, but I wanted them to have a more pale look. So we're gonna take Rackarth Flesh and again, same technique, we're gonna aim at the middle and let the overspray do all the blending for us. The goal of doing a transition like this is to try not to cover up the work that we've already done. So each layer that we're working with, we're moving closer and closer to the center. So I decided I still wanted it to be a little bit paler. So I'm mixing Pallid Witch Flesh and Rackar Flesh together, and I'm doing just one highlight. And I'm just, again, aiming right at the middle and just getting the brightest point to be the center of each one of these little membrane flaps. So we're gonna paint her dress Mephiston Red now, and you can do this with a brush or an airbrush, but if you're gonna do it with an airbrush like I am, I recommend wrapping up the rest of the model in some kind of paper towels or cling wrap, anything like that, because we don't wanna get any overspray and you know mess up all the work that we've done. 
After that dries, grab some Daruchi Violet and a little bit of Lamia Media and mix them together and we're going to use that to shade the dress. I'm pin washing a little bit here. I'm focusing the wash more in the folds uh, and then just kind of drawing it up. After that, we're gonna highlight the dress with some game color orange fire. And if you don't have this particular paint, uh, I believe Citadel makes several kind of orangey bright reds like this that work really, really well. Or you can just mix orange and red together until you get something that's a little lighter tone than the Mephiston red from before. I decided I want the highlights to be a little bit brighter, so I'm using Army Painter Lava Orange now to just kind of bring it up a little bit more, a little bit more contrast from the base coat. After that, we're just gonna do a little bit of dry brushing and I'm using Kindle Flame from Games Workshop. Uh, but I mean, with dry brushing, you can just grab the last color you used, add a little bit of white to it and, and make your own. Uh, it's not too difficult. I just happen to have uh, what I assumed would be basically a perfect dry brushing color right there. So figured I'd give it a shot. And I'll be honest, not a huge fan of this color or how it came out. If I were you, I would probably just stick with making your own dry brush out of the last color with a little bit of white to it. So the next thing we're going to do is mix some Abaddon Black with Corn Red. And I'm kind of going, I guess it's like a one to two Corn Red to Abaddon Black kind of ratio. We want it to be really, really, really dark, uh, almost brown, but we don't want black. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and spray this over the ridge. We're going to do the entire back of the snake part of the model. And then I'm going to go ahead and paint the spines this color as well on the wings. 
And again, this is basically the theme of this video, but when you're airbrushing something like this with gradients, aim it at the center, let the overspray do the work for you. And basically put it down where you put the pure Keraberg Crimson wash from before. Now to directly contradict myself, I'm gonna use a brush and paint this in on the spines before I use the airbrush. Because if I try to use the same technique from before where I just kinda spray at the center, let the overspray do the work, it's gonna take a lot of paint. And I mean, this mix is so dark that I really wanna do just like a quick pass to just kinda spread some of the dark color from the spine out to the wings to complement the transition that we have already done. And I felt like if I didn't block those colors in first, it just was, there's just gonna be way too much color there to get the spines actually dark and still add a little overspray for the transition.
So now I'm mixing Bugman's Glow and Kislev Flesh together with a little bit of medium, and we're gonna go ahead and block in all of the muscles and the rest of the skin. guys go ahead and take Kisla flesh by itself and thin it down a little bit with water or some medium but we're going to just use that pure color to highlight over the mixture that we did before Once that's finished, we're gonna grab Reikland Flesh Shade and I'm gonna pin wash this right into the darkest part of the skin, like right between all the muscles and the biceps and things like that. I like to kind of feather it a little bit near both ends of a muscle just to kind of have it blend a little bit better and to hit the knuckles and things like that. But I'm not washing the entire thing because I really want her to have a pale skin and I don't want the wash to go ahead and uh, tint all of the skin, just those darkest, uh, deepest parts. Thank you. 
once that wash dries, we're going back to Kislev Flesh and we're just gonna highlight the tops again as well. Anywhere that you think you kind of went overboard on the wash, we're gonna hit those layers again, just to bring it back to that nice pale color. Once that dries, we're gonna mix up our Abaddon Black and Corn Red again. And from there, we're gonna go ahead and spray it on her hands uh, around where the spines kind of meet, you know, that transition from normal flesh to demonic flesh. We're just gonna spray that in like a gradient and bring that darker color down a little bit so it looks like, uh, you know, you can see the transition effect where she's going through her metamorphosis. After all that blending and transitioning and gradients, we're gonna do something real easy. Uh, we're just doing some trim work. We're gonna grab some Retributor Gold and we're just gonna do all the jewelry on the model. We're gonna do her crown, we're gonna do the belt and any of these gems and stuff. Oh, 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 oh,
After that dries, let's put Reichland Flesh Shade over that gold to give it a nice warm color. Now for the highlight, we're gonna take some Liberator Gold and we're just gonna go ahead and touch up the highest points on all the gold work. If you'd like to take it another step further, you can grab some Mithril Silver or any kind of real bright metal color and just go ahead and do the edges or the points on the gold. After that's finished, we're gonna go ahead and paint her gloves with Abaddon Black. With the glove complete, we're gonna paint the staff with dryad bark or a nice dark brown. So the person I was painting this for wanted the snakes to resemble the different heads of Tiamat from Dungeons and Dragons. So I went ahead and painted each one of these a different color. We're gonna do it a white one, blue, green, red, and black. 
and you can just go ahead and grab whatever color you feel works the best for this. But I will say with the black one and the white one, I didn't want to just work from those two colors at their purest form. So I opted to use a bone color for the white one and a really dark gray, I think it was Eschen gray, for the black one. And we're gonna go ahead and bring those closer to what they're supposed to look like with the washes in the next step. So I went ahead and washed each one of these snakes in a corresponding color. You could mix it up if you want, but I had all of these, so I figured I might as well use them. I used Drakenhof Nightshade for the blue one, Kerberg Crimson for the red, Anthonian Camo Shade for the green, Reichland Flesh Shade for the white, and of course, Nolan Oil for the black snake. After those washes finish drying, go ahead and dry brush each of these snakes with a lighter color than before. And if you don't have uh, multiple shades of blue or red or green sitting around, you can just mix a little bit of white in. We're just looking for a lighter tone than before, which should be easy because we've already darkened it down. I have a couple of these dry brush paints from GW. A friend of mine gave them to me a while ago because he didn't like them. I'm still not a big fan, but I'm playing around with them a little bit. So I use the skink blue here for the blue snake. After that, we're gonna go ahead and dot all of the teeth with some new shopty bone. And if you've got a really steady hand, you can go ahead and dot the eyes with the same color. I think I opted to skip that here because I looked at how tiny they were and I was just like, no thanks, uh, I'm, I'm not dealing with that today. Then after that, we're going to go ahead and real quick do the straps and all the belts on Marathi and Abaddon Black. Once that black's dry, we're gonna edge highlight it with some Dark Reaper. Thank you. 
Now I'm gonna put a base coat of Warpstone Glow over her spear and that little heart that she has in her offhand. Now for those runes on her belly, we're gonna to wanna to do the Warpstone Glow through the airbrush because we're gonna create a gradient effect. And while I was at it, I figured I would just go over the heart and the spear one more time just to kinda get a little bit more color there. Now, just spray this over each rune and again, using the same technique, focus it on the middle, let the overspray do the gradient work for you. And we're just going over each one of these one by one until we have a nice little green set up here. Once we finish with that, we're gonna move on to Necrotite Green and we're gonna highlight the sphere, the heart, and those scales. And we're gonna focus on the middle and try to preserve some of that color from before. We don't wanna completely overshadow the darker green. Now we're gonna use Flash Gets Yellow to highlight all that work that we've done, but I'm gonna mix it into the pot with the Necrotite Green that I still have left over before I move straight to pure yellow. gets yellow mixed with a little bit of flow weight. Now I'm not using any actual name brand or anything like that. All I've done is taken some Dawn dish soap, like a drop, like very, very small amount and mixed it into a glass of water and then swish that around and honest to God, just take like one or two drops out of that. You need very little, but we're gonna mix that in with our paint and then add some more water to it. And what that's going to do is cause the paint to run directly into the crack. So you're gonna want a really skinny brush and load it up with your paint and then just kind of tap it on the outlines of the runes. And then it's gonna use its own capillary action and pull that paint through the rune. And then if you get a little bit of a smudge, just go ahead and wipe that off with your finger. It will leave behind the yellow, the brightest yellow right in the rune. same treatment to the spear and the heart. I'm just gonna go ahead and do it with a brush. And this is just regular flash gets yellow. This is not the thin down stuff. Just go ahead and edge highlight all these sharp points with it.
we're getting near the end here, but we're going to go back to the terrain that is on this model and we're going to give it a nice base coat of white because we're going to make this look like marble. So we want it to be nice and pristine white. And I'm a very messy painter, uh, so I've got all kinds of overspray going all over this model. So we're going to fix that. We're going to do everything in white, the pillar, the skulls, the staircase, everything. And I actually did the base for Little Marathi at the same time, so you'll get a little bit of a peek at that. So after that white has had time to dry, we're gonna take Seraphim Sepia and mix it with Lamian Media. And we're going to run this through all of the cracks in the marble and just kind of let it tint the color. Because if you look at a piece of marble, it's got a lot of color variation in it. So we don't want to wash the whole thing. We want to be kind of sparing with it, but we kind of want to get it in kind of random patches. So the cracks are a good place to aim for. Nightshade mixed with the same Lamia Media as before. And you're kind of wanting like a one to one mixture, maybe one to two, leaning more towards Lamia Media. If you do it thin, you can always come back and add more, but you definitely want it to be pretty thin. So we're going to focus this directly into the cracks from before, and you can kind of draw them out as well and make little lines. And if you do that, you're going to want to make them look really thin, but they'll look like little veins of different color minerals moving through the marble, and it looks really cool.
Once that's complete, the final step is to add a gloss varnish or some art coat over the entirety of it. And you can go ahead and just put this all over it. It makes it nice and shiny and adds that extra layer of realism to the model. Not to mention it's gonna protect your paint job, so it's a win-win. So the next part is a little cheat. We're gonna use some of the gem colors from Games Workshop to do these rather than painting all the gems by hand. So you're gonna go ahead and dot anything that's a gemstone with silver. And then after that, we're going to put a drop of this kind of candy coat stuff on it. Now, if you have trouble finding these paints, because I think they've been discontinued, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, there are lots of companies that make similar products. You're just looking for, I, I believe they're called a candy coat. And they're semi-transparent gloss type paints. Uh, fun fact, Blood for the Blood God is basically one of these paints. And it makes some really cool dark red gems.
Now we're going to move on to the torch and we're just going to go ahead and hit that basin with some Retributor Gold. After that, use a nice dark brown. I've opted for Dryad Bark to do the actual torch staff. Then we're gonna use Agrax Earthshade while we're here and we're gonna go ahead and slap it on all of the skulls from before. And if you didn't already paint these white, go ahead and do that first before you put the Agrax over them. Now I'm gonna show you how to do flames really, really easy. We're just gonna use nothing but washes to do this. So first, go ahead and paint the flame pure white, get a nice white base coat down. Once the white has had time to dry, we're gonna put our first wash and we're gonna use a yellow wash, uh, Cassandora Yellow for this example, and paint it over the entirety of the flame with the exception of right near the base. Leave a little bit of that white behind. Once that dries, we're gonna move to the next shade and we're gonna use Fugan Orange or any kind of orange wash. And we're gonna put this over the flame, but just like before where we left a little bit of the previous color behind, do the same thing. Just leave a little bit of that yellow and after that work up and bring the orange all the way to the tip. Once the orange dried, we're gonna move on to Caribur Crimson and just like before, leave a little bit of that orange behind and then work the red all the way up to the tip. The last wash we're gonna do on this is Agrax Earthshade and you're gonna to wanna to hit just the very tip of the flame. Now we're gonna to touch the very, very, very tips with some Abaddon Black. So I went back in here with some of the yellow from before and I brought it down just a smidge. Uh, you definitely want to have some white behind, but I thought I had a little bit too much and I may have gone overboard, but I think it looks good. So for the dirt, you can use this Vallejo Earth Texture. This is what I use. It's a huge time saver and you get a ton of it for like 14 bucks. You can just put it down on the base and it will dry, no PVA glue or anything required. Or you can do the old classic sand method. But regardless, you're gonna wanna put some of that in the all the different cracks. Like I went ahead and put it on the stairs. And if you're gonna do that, make sure it's going from one direction because like if the wind was blowing across a battlefield and it was building up dirt in a spot, it would just build it up in one area. So make sure you keep that in mind when you're putting it down in different places. But once you have that down, go ahead and dry brush the whole thing with Steel Legion Drab. After that, do a slightly lighter dry brush with some Ushapti Bone. And the very last step is just take some Agrax Earthshade and dump it over all of the dirt. After that finishes drying, you can pretty much go in whatever direction you want uh, for your grass. 
And you can use tufts, you can put glue down and shake some uh, flocking all over the place. I went ahead and used a static grass applicator and it was my first time using it so I didn't really feel confident filming it and trying to make a tutorial out of it. So you'll see the pictures in the end here of what mine ended up looking like. Um, I kind of went a little overboard. I got excited, that's what happened, and I went way overboard with the grass. It still looks good, but I ended up covering up all of the detail that we just worked on here, getting this muddy base down. So, like I said, if you want to see how I used a static grass applicator, you can check out my Carnosaur video where I kind of go a little bit more in depth on it. Anyways, that's it guys. This is Marathi after she's all said and done. I mean, I love this model. I thought she came out great. Uh, she makes an awesome centerpiece for any Daughters of Cain army. And I'm always just looking for an excuse to get her on the table. Now, if there's anything that you want to see painted by us, just leave a comment down below and, and let me know what you'd want to see next. I'm trying to get more videos out on the regular and I definitely want to be making content that you all at home uh, actually want to see. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I really, really hope you guys take the time to share, like, and subscribe. It, it helps me grow as a YouTuber and don't forget to check out dndtonight.com where we host all kinds of cool content, including our podcast. Till next time, guys, happy wargaming.